Hello, welcome back to Mass Effect 3 Legendary Edition. So, bit of a heavy episode uh, last time. Uh, Earth has fallen. And uh, Caden is in bad shape. May as well start by reading about this. The Reapers took, the Reapers took Earth in a matter of hours. The Alliance knew the first wave would arrive from Batarian space, but they were unprepared for the speed and scale of the attack. The Reapers bypassed the six and seven fleets at Terra Nova and Eden Prime, flying straight from relay to relay where they could neither be tracked nor intercepted. The tactic was unexpected, since the navies of organic species would never risk coming out of FTL within combat range or leaving enemies at their backs to threaten supply lines. At Arcturus Station, more than a dozen Reaper capital ships engaged the Alliance's second, third, and fifth fleets, this was mere screening for the main force. Dozens more capital ships continued through the Charon Relay, where the first fleet had been lying in wait, but was soon destroyed. The fourth fleet, near Earth, had a few minutes of advance warning. It stood no better chance. After destroying Earth's convoys, smaller Reaper ships wiped out all GPS and communication satellites in Earth's orbit and cut the under undersea fiber optic cables that linked the continents. Earth's resistance now relies on outdated radio towers, and a few quantum entanglement communicators whose matched pairs happen to be on other continents or outside the solar system. Communication is so limited that, fate, that the fate of entire nations remains unknown. The capital ships bombarded defense installations and industrial centers, annihilating entire cities with populations in the low millions, including Adelaide, Hamburg, Al Jubail, and Fort Worth. Meanwhile, Reaper destroyers descended into the atmosphere to melt roads and capture population centers with minimal loss of life. This is not an example of the Reapers being merciful. More likely, they are hurting their prey to make the coming harvest that much easier. So, yeah. Things are... grim. To say the least. Uh, before talking to the Council... Let's go check on Caden. Because he was in pretty bad shape. Beautiful view that the hospital's got. Hey, Hello, Commander Shepard. Welcome to Huerta Memorial Hospital. The human specialist medical officer in charge is Dr. Michel. Also, please note that specialists for all known Citadel species are on call. Please ensure that you observe proper decontamination protocols at all times while in this area. Where'd the hospital get its name? It is named after President Christopher Huerta of Earth's United North American States. The donor who requested the tribute expressed the desire to remain anonymous. Uh, so you may or may not remember me talking about this in one of the uh, the late Mass Effect 2 videos. Uh, so yeah, President Huerta. Uh, he had a stroke. Uh, he was actually... He was actually completely brain dead for 90 minutes. Uh, he was revived with a... Uh, VI in his brain to help him operate. And uh, there was a court case uh, determining whether he actually should still be president. Whether he was actually still, you know, a living person, or if he was just uh, a corpse being piloted by a computer. Which, uh, honestly should be relevant to Shepard. Yeah, easy to forget, Shepard did Die. There's no. There was no angsting about it in Mass Effect Two. There was no uh, real contemplation about what that means. But yeah. You can really cover treatment for any kind of species here. Huerta Memorial surpasses all requirements needed for any multi-species medical facility. This facility's attendant levels can also replicate the living conditions needed to accommodate other, more exotic species. Aquatic environments, for example, are available on short notice. 
What about the medical staff? How do they deal with so many species? All personnel are required to undergo mandatory and regular psychological evaluations, as well as refresher courses. Hospital administration understands how difficult it can be for staff to deal with such a wide variety of patients. It is imperative they be offered the support needed to retain their current high standards. What else is in the area? The Huerta Memorial Hospital has experts from every major race and residency, with many specializing in Xeno medicine. The facility works with prestigious medical universities from around the galaxy, offering internships to residents and nurses. Nice PR with video. Access to cutting edge technology and support from major pharmaceutical companies, the hospital ensures the best care to its patients. Any other important areas I should know about? The Normandy is currently docked in D24, which is tagged to your biometrics. Docking Bay E-24 has been repurposed into temporary housing to accommodate the recent influx of civilians to the Citadel. If you wish to contact your species' official Citadel representative, please go to Citadel Embassies. The Presidium Commons have been a cultural mainstay since the Council was first established at the Citadel. Thank you. Please speak with me again if you require further assistance. Yeah, I'll be good, I think. Hey, I can't jump from here. Another fuel capacity. And yeah, sure, I'll get the uh, Peruvian whiskey. Profits from sales go to help new medical research. Smooth and smoky with a hint of heat. Each sip of TM88 has a story to tell. And each glass has a story to inspire. TM88 isn't one of the Earth's top selling beverage Zoda. exports for nothing. Known for having both a calming influence and the ability to stimulate blood flow, TM88 is the only alcoholic drink endorsed by the Medical Board of Sirkesh. The price for TM88 includes deposit. Please recycle. All profits from sales go to help new medical research. It'll be useful later. Shepard, there you are. Dr. Chakwas, you're here? I'm working at an Alliance R&D lab down in Shelter Wards, coordinating closely with Admiral Hackett. I heard you escaped Earth in the Normandy, and that someone was critically injured. I came as fast as I could. We had a run-in with a Cerberus synthetic on Mars. Caden took the worst of it. How is he doing? Very well, all things considered. I'm impressed with Major Elenko's resilience, as well as Dr. Michelle's expertise. I wish I could have been there to help on Mars. Dr. Chuck was our old friend. Uh, voiced once again by Carolyn Seymour. It's been six months, Doctor. How have you been? Good. I've been fortunate. When they impounded Normandy, the Alliance didn't really know what to do with me. I was never officially part of Cerberus. And I'd gotten a proper leave of absence from my previous post. So you hadn't technically done anything wrong by joining me to defeat the Collectors? Yes. Though I suppose if you were judged to be a war criminal, I would have been tried as an accessory. Good thing that I wasn't, uh... sentenced then. Or good thing I wasn't judged a war criminal. Yep, she belongs in the Normandy. Your place is in Normandy's med bay, not some lab. I couldn't agree more. You say the word, and I'm with you. The Normandy wouldn't be the same without you, Doctor. Get your things. Docking bay D-24. Yes, Commander. And thank you. Don't thank me so soon. Remember, Joker's still aboard. And I'd be surprised if he's been remembering his medication. Yeah, we got Chuck was back. Dr. Karen Chakwas is a trauma surgeon and a major in the Alliance Navy. She served on the SSV Normandy under both Captain Anderson and Commander Shepard, and was aboard the ship when it was destroyed by the Collectors. She later quit the Alliance in order to rejoin Shepard on the Cerberus-built Normandy SR-2. Along with most of the 2nd Normandy's crew, Dr. Chakwas was kidnapped by the Collectors and taken beyond the Omega-4 relay, where Commander Shepard eventually rescued her. After the Alliance impounded the Normandy SR-2, 
an inquiry found that Dr. Chakwas had no significant role in or provable knowledge of Cerberus's criminal activities. She has since rejoined the Alliance. Good on her. Uh, so if she is dead, or if you choose to leave her behind, because uh, you can decide to have her stay as a... Uh, in the research labs, as a... Uh, in order for her to become a war asset, which I will talk more about later. I'll talk more about war assets later. But you can choose to have her uh, stay in the labs. Uh, if you do that, or if she, or if you didn't rescue her in time in Mass Effect 2, you can instead recruit. Commander Shepard, good to see you. Dr. Michelle, it's been a long time. We've come a long way from that small clinic down in the wards. Because of you, I don't know where I'd be if you hadn't dealt with Fist and his thugs. Now I met physician in the Presidium Clinic. You gave me this chance. I assume you're here about Major Alenko. Uh, voiced by Jan Smith. How is Caden doing? The head trauma was severe, but we reduced the swelling quickly. These types of injury can go either way. He hasn't regained consciousness yet, but his vitals are strong, so I'm optimistic. You can go see him if you like. He's just down the hall. This war may leave a lot of injured people homeless. Can the Citadel clinics care for them all? We're fine now, but I'm worried. Every hospital on the Citadel is preparing for the worst. I hear the docks are tightly controlled, but we just can't leave people floating out there forever. Yeah, it's gonna be rough. How are your medical supplies holding up? We're well stocked now, but I can't say I'm not worried about the future. We've posted guards on our reserves. War profiteering has already begun. Of course it has. Ugh. With the center of this Capitalism. Side, we must have a lot of direct reports. We've got 12 full-time doctors and over 50 support staff. It can be overwhelming, quite different from my days in the wards. Keep up the good work, Doctor. You too, Commander. So yeah, like I said, you can actually have her as uh, the doctor on the Normandy. Uh, there's not much real point to it. Uh, unfortunately, it's... Uh, like you might want to, you might think about doing it as just sort of a uh, a change of face, but they really didn't give her much uh, dialogue in the Normandy, unfortunately. Not surprising. Everybody, everybody's gonna go with Chakwas because patient stable for now. After Chakwas, touch and go. Good work, Doctor Freilich. Narrow splint still the best course of action. I'll see if we have the required spatial bindings. Meet you back here. Hey, Caden. Don't know if you can hear me, but since you can't tell me to get the hell out either, I'm gonna take my chances. Don't die, Caden. You've got to fight. We need you in this. Seeing you in action again reminded me you're a hell of a soldier. The Alliance could sure use you. I could use you. You need anything, Doc, let me know. But he's not under he's not under my command anymore. Hi, doctor. Didn't expect to see you again so soon. Well, we need to prescribe you another round of antibiotics. For when I ship out? I have some bad news. Your squad applied the Medigel correctly, but infection had already set in by the time they found you. I'm sorry. I'm afraid we have to remove your leg below the knee. What? I don't understand. It doesn't even hurt. It would if we took you off the painkillers, Lieutenant. Yeah, there's a lot of conversations to eavesdrop on in this game. Uh, all over the Citadel. Pretty much none are good. There's just a whole lot of really, really, really sad stories to 
the listening off. One of the worst is right over there. Uh, I'm going to hold off on that one for a little while. And then I'll uh, just do it all like pretty much one at a time. Or like uh, all at once I'll do the... I'll do like all the conversations. Uh, like I'll do that full conversation all at once. Hello, Commander Shepard. Welcome to Citadel Embassies. The current human ambassador is Dominic Osoba. Commander mm. Bailey is the CSEC officer on duty. You will find him in the Citadel Security District Office. What else is in the area? This area is reserved for human embassy personnel and attending CSEC security. The human embassy prides itself on offering swift assistance to any who fall under its auspices. Where's the Spectre Requisitions Office? The Spectre Requisitions District Office is down the hallway to your left. Note that requisition forms are available only to agents whose biometrics are verified and on file. That's it. Thanks. Please speak with me again if you require further assistance. According to the Council, these galaxy-wide attacks are part of a massive and organized invasion plan. Yeah. Look what they did to Female Shepard's uh, running animation. So bad. Or not her running, but her sort of jogging animation, I guess. Ugh. Terrible. Commander, Counselor Udina said you'd be coming. If you'll follow me, the council is already in session. We've got our own problems, Counselor. Earth is not in this alone. But Earth was the first council world hit. By our reports, it faces the brunt of the attack. By your reports. Oof. The reports are accurate. Earth was attacked by the Reapers. No air quotes this time, Sparatus. And it's just the beginning. We need your help. Everything you can spare. Each of us faces a similar situation. Even now, the Reapers are pressing on our borders. If we lend you our strength to help Earth, our own worlds will fall. We Fair. must fight this enemy together. And so we should just follow you to Earth? Even if we were to unite our fleets, do you really believe we could defeat the Reapers? I don't expect you to follow me without a plan. Counselors, we have that plan. A blueprint created by the Protheans during their war with the Reapers. A blueprint for what? We're still piecing it together. But it appears to be a weapon of some sort. Capable of destroying the Reapers? So it would seem. The scale is... it would be a colossal undertaking. No. I forwarded the plans to Admiral Hackett. The remnants of the human fleet are already gathering resources to begin construction. Our initial calculations suggest it is very feasible to build. If we work together. Have you considered that the Reapers destroyed the Protheans? What good did this weapon do? It was incomplete. There was a missing component, here. Something referred to only as the Catalyst. But they ran out of time before they could finish building it. Do you really believe this can stop the Reapers? I mean, yeah, there's no other options. Like, there's really no other options. Uh, straight up war? Can't be won. Liara believes it can work, and so do I. And while I haven't always agreed with Udina, he's right about this. We need to stand together, now more than ever. The Reapers won't stop it, Earth. They'll destroy every organic being in the galaxy if we don't find a way to stop them. The cruel and yeah. unfortunate truth is that while the Reapers focus on Earth, we can prepare and regroup. We are convening a summit amongst our species. If we can manage to secure our own borders, we may once again consider aiding. I'm sorry, Commander. That is the best we can do. Nothing. Shepard, meet me in my office. I hope that's an offer of support. I'll be digging up what I can on this Prothean device, Shepard. Yep. 
Nothing. They're a bunch of self-concerned jackasses, Shepard. We may have a spot on the council, but humanity will always be considered second-rate. How can they be so blind? They're scared, and they're looking out for themselves. Our people are scared, and we are looking out for them the best we know how. Counselor? Commander, I can't give you what you need, but I can tell you how to get it. I'm listening. Primarch Fedorian called the War Summit, but we lost contact with him when the Reapers hit Palavan. Those meetings won't proceed without him. The Normandy is one of the few ships that can extract Primarch Fedorian undetected. Uh, so, the Counselors. Uh, the Turian Counselor here, Sporadus, is voiced by Alistair Duncan. Uh, the Asari uh, Counselor, Tevos, is voiced by uh, Jan Smith. Her name's Jan Alexander Smith, but she's credited in this game as Jan Smith. And uh, the Salarian Counselor, uh, Valern, is voiced by Armin Shiverman. And, of course, uh, Udina, voiced once again by Bill Ratner. So far, you've only explained how I can help you. It might seem that way. But the leaders of this summit will be the ones deciding our future. The fate of our fleets, where they fight, and with whom. A grateful Primarch would be a tremendous ally in your bid to unite us. We're at war, and you want me to play politician? If it gets you what you need, what does it matter? There. Our latest intelligence says that the Primarch was moved to a base on Palavan's largest moon. I've done all I can to help. The rest is up to you. Yep. There is one other thing. The Council wanted me to tell you, we've chosen to uphold your Spectre status. Hurrah! And various resources will be made available to you. Good day. Well, that went well. It's a start. I'll talk to the others in the meantime. See if we can support this summit. Move things along. Thanks. Uh, so yeah, if you uh, didn't have your... Spectre status uh, renewed in uh, the second game, then it does get renewed here. Dr. Car when humanity won a position on the Council for its part in defending the Citadel, the Alliance chose Captain David Anderson for the position. Udina became his advisor. Anderson eventually quit over frustrations with council politics, and the Alliance named Udina to the office. Yeah, doesn't. Uh, the Codex is voiced uh, once again for the third time by Neil Ross. Uh, Donnell Adina is the lone human on the Citadel Council. Although he has a keen ability for furthering his own political career, Udina has long promoted humanity's interests, first and foremost in the galactic arena. Despite his unwavering focus on human interests, Counselor Udina is usually willing to collaborate with other species. Even his opponents can see that Udina gives fair consideration to non-human proposals, so long as humanity also benefits. Earth, the home world and capital of humanity, was enjoying a new golden age before the Reapers attacked. Disease, pollution, and other social ills were on the decline, thanks to technological advances and a wealth of resources from the colonies. Earth was an inspiration, even to alien cultures, resulting in influence out of proportion with humanity's brief time on the galactic stage. The Reaper attack has put an end to any semblance of this former life. The great cities of Earth are storehouses of human DNA for the Reapers to harvest. Reaper gunships, capable of megaton-scale firepower, annihilated industrial centers in seconds. The militaries of Earth's disparate nation-states have retained only partial communication with the system's Alliance fleets, leaving the planet's resistance efforts uncoordinated and vulnerable. The loss of the Kambui network has cut off Earth's economy from the rest of the galaxy, sending shockwaves across galactic markets and a significant obstacle to receiving aid. 
A political then, uh, economic pact for collective colonial security, the Alliance is the central galactic institution of human society. The Alliance gained associate membership to the Citadel Council in 2165 and full membership in 2183. One... With the Systems Alliance is an independent supranational government. Yeah, I think uh, those two, I believe, uh, I did back in uh, two, so. Read variant. Yeah, I'll read more about uh, that later. The Council to save their lives, and for what? Apologies that boil down to maybe later. If we don't figure out something, maybe later will be an epitaph on a mass grave of 11 billion. I know what Hell I'm gonna line. do. What are you gonna do? Humanity has created some goodwill in the galaxy. Now we cash in our chips. I will get what funding I can, what materials I can, and spread the message. Help the humans, help yourselves. I'll institute a draft in our colonies and order all civilian ships armed. Work on the Prothean device will be around the clock. Any news from Earth? There is constant news. All of it bad. The Reapers are destroying satellites and the old nuclear missile silos, along with everything else that could help. We have a handful of quantum entanglers spread out over the continents. All other communication is cut. What's your read on the counselors? Any angles I could pursue? Tavos is a diplomat and compromiser, but she's wrapped up in defending Asari space like a mother panther. Valern is out of his depth. The Salarians like their wars won before they start. They're frightened now. Use that. And Sparatus, I'd take what he offers. It's strange days when the Turians are the least hostile to humans. And there's a need there. Useful. You're a Citadel counselor. Don't you have options when the others block you like this? With Parliament destroyed and Shastri gone, I have more power than any human in history. But today, you saw how little that is. Rest assured, I will not be counted out long. I know I can move mountains. Do not lose sight of that, because the task before us is moving planets. He's a lot more likable here. Who knew that all it took was... Uh... The destruction of Earth for Udina to become uh, likable. Anderson would be proud, so long as you deliver. You think you can do that? You need a carrot or a stick to drive a mule, and humanity has neither right now. Our armada is tied down fighting or fleeing, and with Earth's calm buoys gone, our economy is reduced to an IOU. But leave that part to me. I will lean on our colonies for all they're worth, and I can broker enough trade to repair and resupply Hackett's fleet. Did you know a lot of people on Earth? Many. It's monstrous to think of them being snuffed out, of course, but the part that gets me is Arcturus. I must know... I must have known most of the Alliance Parliament on a first-name basis. I required a second VI just to track all their birthdays and anniversaries. Rose Garden stuff. But to have it all gone. Hmm. Yeah, it's... Always the little things that hurt most. I should go. I'll be here. On a side note, you may remember a conversation, or you may not, but there was a conversation with Ashley in the first game. Uh, where she... Talked about species looking out for their own interests first. Uh, the analogy she used was uh, if a bear attacks you and the only way to survive is to stick your dog on it and run, uh, you'll do it. You may love your dog, but it's not human. And uh, yeah, humanity is... Humanity is a dog right now. Reapers are the biggest bears out there. So it turns out she wasn't wrong.
so yeah, the railway. Uh, again, you may remember me mentioning them. Uh, they were part of a uh, Citadel Daily News network, or Citadel, yeah, Citadel Daily or Cerberus, Cerberus Daily News uh, articles. So they get uh, reference again here. Uh, Cerberus Daily News was uh, was canon, and uh, yeah, through here is a uh, firing range where you can test out uh, your various weapons. Spectre requisitions, a lot of expensive stuff. Uh, all this, all these end seven weapons were originally DLC. Uh, they are all phenomenal weapons. They're like the best weapons of their classes. Uh, and yeah, the end seven defender armor again. You see, pretty good armor. Uh, yeah, Eagle is like the best handgun. Valiant is actually not necessarily the best sniper rifle. It's a good one, but it's not the best sniper rifle. Uh, Crusader, actually also not necessarily the best uh, shotgun. Uh, but the Hurricane's really good. The Piranha's really good. Typhoon is really good. And uh, like I said, the Eagle is uh, just a phenomenal gun. Unfortunately, all these guns are ridiculously expensive, as uh, in here, and money is limited. Uh, Black Widow is uh, pretty great. The original uh, Widow from Mass Effect 2 was only available to Legion and to Infiltrators and Soldiers if they uh, if those classes took the uh, the Widow on the Collector ship. Uh, Black Widow is like the Widow, so it does a massive damage, but it's got multiple shots. So yeah, nothing in here is bad. There's no bad weapons in here, but they are they are all expensive. So not something I'm likely to bother with. Welcome to the Spectre Information Processing Center. This terminal offers secure information access and support for authorization of covert operations or requisitions. It is restricted to operatives currently on active duty with special tactics and reconnaissance. Any operation requiring payment can be executed at the terminal nearby, which supports secure and untraceable financial transactions. Quarian Fleet Intel, Quarian Pilgrim, Gen Volon Narnima. Hey, the Nima. That's the ship that the... the Tally serves on. Uh, on the Citadel, it received a large credit transfer from the fleet. Gen Volon purchased tech, including high-end weapon mounts, and kinetic barrier emitters from several ship service centers. On Ilium, another Quarian Pilgrim, unidentified, was observed searching for a ship traveling close to the Perseus Vale. The Pilgrim was later heard saying that his pilgrimage was recalled. Data suggests the Quarian fleet is withdrawing its pilgrims and upgrading ships for combat somewhere near the Perseus Vale. This could be a reaction of the Reaper invasion, but no formal offer or request for assistance has come. Intel suggests the Quarians may instead be preparing for conflict with Geth. Exactly what we didn't want. It's a good idea to come by here every time you go to the Citadel, just because there's going to be new stuff every time. There is no anti-humanity conspiracy here, Ms. Al Jelani. The Council's simply not granting interviews at this time. My viewers are going to know that CSEC and the Council are denying them access. Listen, lady, you think I like playing gatekeeper between the paparazzi and the politicians? I don't have time to babysit them, and I'm not here to hold your hand. Well, I'm camping out until I'm granted an audience. Fine. I hope you brought a sleeping bag. Commander Shepard? Commander, humanity has questions. I bet they do, and there's your answer, apparently. Damn press. See, you're keeping the peace. Yeah, I feel like a glorified doorman. Most people would see it as a move up. Wedged in here with all the stuffed shirts? I'd rather be back down on the streets. I appreciate the higher pay grade, but I'm not a political creature. As I said last episode, uh, Bailey here is voiced by Michael Hogan, uh, who's got a great voice. I love his voice. If you didn't want to be up, why'd you accept? 
<laughs> you don't say no to Councillor Udina. Well, maybe you would, but I gotta live here. <laughs> I know, squeaky wheel gets the oil, but I didn't lobby for a promotion like some other officers. And not even sure why he picked me. I never know with politicians. I hate political BS. Don't lose your edge. You might need it. I oh, wouldn't mind an excuse to get my fingers dirty. <laughs> it's killing me about Earth. You and me both. I haven't been back in years. Now I may never. If this ain't the end of days, it's pretty damn close. I like that delivery. I'm up to my neck in trouble, but if there's anything you need, I'll do my damnedest to help. You got loved ones out there? Somewhere. Ex-wife I lost track of, and... And a son and daughter. They're still on Earth. I'm sorry, Bailey. Yeah, I'm just like everyone else. I'm losing myself and things I can control. And at the moment, that means creating the illusion of security here. <laughs> Thought things were relatively quiet here. Well, compared to where you're coming from, sure. But the war is being felt everywhere. Millions across the galaxy have been displaced, and most of them come here. Must have you doing somersaults. <laughs> yeah, already allocated the bulk of my men to customs, but we're still overtaxed, cataloging and processing them all. Is the Citadel gearing up for war? Uh, there's a false sense of security here. Even people from worlds that have gone down act like they're safe. Well, I guess it's not just human nature. We all lie to ourselves to deal with horror. Anything important going on around here? <laughs> you kidding? With the Reapers running roughshod through the galaxy, it seemed like the Council is in constant session. We got more ambassadors and dignitaries here than ever before pleading their cases. But that's just the tip of the iceberg, really. It was Udina who made you a commander, huh? Yeah, he's become an even bigger shot around here. Got a lot of ambition. He suspected Executor Palin was conspiring against the Council and had me investigate. Find anything incriminating? Yeah, enough to arrest him. And when Palin resisted, um, I was forced to kill him. Udina rewarded me with the promotion. And near as I can tell, being a commander just means I'm putting out different fires. So that story, as so many, uh, happened in uh, one of the comics. Uh, Palin was framed. The implication is actually that Udina framed Palin, uh, specifically in order to get him out of the way to put in uh, Commander Bailey, who uh, Udina obviously figured would be both a human in charge of CSEC. He wanted a human in charge of CSEC, and Bailey, he figured, would be, uh, or the implication is that he figured uh, Bailey would be controllable. It'll probably get worse before it gets better, Bailey. Yeah, if it ever gets better. <laughs> well, there's a fun glitch. I just want to see where he goes. His mission and nonsense. I just filled out the paperwork. He's very punctual when he's on the field. He checks in every week. Only he hasn't checked in for a while now. A month. Anyway, I'd like to file an expedited contact request. Yes, of course, ma'am. But the notes on his file state he's not under a contact ban. Oh. You already looked. How kind of you. I'm just so worried. It's not like him to go quiet for so long. As soon as I get news, ma'am, I'll let you know as soon as I get news. You're such a nice young woman. You know, you remind me of my daughter. Yep. Like I said, 
No happy conversations. Lions to fight. Colony life. It's not that bad. have questions. I know they do. And uh, as always, Kalisa, once again, is voiced by April Banigan. Commander Shepard, Kalisa bent seen in Algelani. Isn't it true that you were on Earth when the Reapers attacked? How do you justify running away while millions of people on Earth die? Is that the best we can expect from the Alliance? I'm a I paragon. came to get help for Earth. For everyone. What about all the people suffering while you play politics with the Council? What about them? How can you stand here while our families die? What are you going to do? Kalisa, yes. we're doing everything we can. Before they cut the feeds, there were so many dead. I'm gonna stop the Reapers or die trying, but I need your help. Keep asking the hard questions. Don't let the Council forget about Earth. I will. Thank you, Commander. We haven't always seen eye to eye, but I'm glad you're on our side. Yep. Even Kalisa gets a little bit of a, uh... More on war assets in a few minutes. Even Kalisa starts getting a little bit of redemption. Yeah, I don't think she's featured in the letter. Uh, that, uh, so in the first two games, uh, you can punch her. Uh, that continues here. If you take that Renegade Interrupt, uh, you take a swing at her. Unlike in the first two games, she actually dodges that first uh, that first swing, and uh, there's a second renegade interrupt that pops up uh, for you to headbutt her. If you miss that second interrupt, uh, because you're ready to laugh at having punched her again, uh, she will punch you. She'll knock Shepard flat on his ass, or their ass. Which is pretty great. lost in the Shrike Abyss. Nevertheless, we are committed to helping both the Turian Empire and the Human Alliance. The Council called the invaders Reapers, the same term once used by a disgraced Commander Shepard to refer to a theoretical enemy. <laughs> so much for theoretical. Hey, Commander. Liara told me the Council's not interested in helping us. Something like that. Why would they? Look at this place. There's no war here. People are whispering about it. They're talking about it. But they don't really believe it. I take it this is your first time here with the elite of the galaxy. I've been to the Citadel, but never up here on the Presidium. It's... not right. It looks pretty, calm and peaceful. But it's not right. It's all just an illusion. It was peaceful. Once. But was it? Really? I mean, when push comes to shove, they're just going to turtle up. Oh, but don't hit them too, right? They'd rather believe in this than face the truth. I can hardly believe it myself. Like everything back on Earth was some kind of nightmare. Yeah. That's what I hate most. It's like this place wants you to forget that. So, you still want to go back to Earth? Hell yeah, but... But? You were right. So was Anderson. We can't stop them alone. Besides, looks like you're going to have your hands full convincing these pendejo politicians to help us. And I'm up for it. Whatever it takes. Glad to hear it. I'm going to head down to some of the lower levels where they keep it real. You got some spare time? You should come and find me. Maybe I'll do that. Not able to do that just now, unfortunately. Recent intel suggests that the entire Batarian hegemony has been destroyed by an unknown force. 
Welcome, Commander Shepard. One moment, please. Now arriving at Docking Bay D-24. Ma'am, I can't say where we're going or where or why. But you're on the Normandy, right? I thought Doc was lashing on Earth. Did Commander Shepard escape? She did, didn't she? Why would she be here after she's doing the council? These galaxy-wide attacks are part of a massive talk about organized that. invasion plan. You don't have plan. to. Commander Shepard! Stop harassing my crew. Copeland, you did good. Said nothing. You kept... Yeah. You kept operational security. You didn't give anything away. Good work. And now a controversial figure. Commander, just who I was looking for. Diana Allers, Alliance News Network. I think we can help each other. I suppose you want an interview? Even better. I'm a military reporter with the show called Battle Space. We're carried on just about all council planets. My producers want me embedded on a human ship, and I want that ship to be the Normandy. Why would I want that? Wars can be won or lost in the editing room, and this war needs to be won. I've got Alliance security clearance and operate without a crew. You get veto power over the segments I file. Can you handle an arrangement like that? Or do I keep looking? So Diana Allers, she is one of the most controversial aspects of the game. One of the most hated, one of the most universally disliked parts of the game. Uh, she is voiced by... Uh, oh, I've forgotten the uh, person's name. Jessica Chobot. She is voiced by Jessica Chobot. Uh, at the time that this game came out, uh, she was working for uh, IGN. She was a... Uh, you know, she did videos uh, over on IGN. Uh, which... Having someone working at a gaming journalism website, gaming news website, having someone, one of those people as part of a game rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Uh, IGN and Chobot both denied that there is any sort of conflict of interest. Uh, Chobot actually denied that she was even a journalist. She, her position was that she was a presenter. She was a, a personality. Uh, so she denied that she was even a journalist. Uh, and IGN said that now having her in the game isn't going to influence our uh, reporting on the game. Uh, obviously, not a lot of people bought that. Um, this was before Gamergate and the backlash to it turned uh, ethics and video game journalism into uh, a punchline. Uh, so, uh, uh, quite a few people at the time did find this to be a violation of journalistic ethics. Not that video game journalism is the same as political journalism. Uh, you know, these people are friends. You know, the journalists and the developers, you know, they get to know each other. They're both involved in sort of They're both passionate about games, so a lot of them are friends. Um, and, I mean, it's video games. Is it really that big a deal if uh, they're on friendly terms with each other? But, obviously, gamers also take video games seriously. So, they also felt that, you know, do it. At least try to present... Uh, the appearance of being uh, objective. See, and beyond that, uh, there is another reason why people hated Diana Adams. Couple reasons. First of all, Chilbot is a bad actor. She's just not good. She's no, not a good actor. She's just not good at it. Uh, her appearance is weird. Others' appearance is weird. 
A lot of people have called her, uh, referred to her as uh, Space Snooky. Uh, for the youngsters among you, Snooky was on a show called uh, Jersey Shore, and uh, she was considered one of the trashier people on that show. Um, so she's got just kind of a weird appearance, and uh, and she's replacing fan favorite uh, intrepid journalist uh, Emily Wong, who I'll talk about in a minute. Tell your producers yes for now. We'll see how it works out. Report to the ship as soon as possible. Any questions? How much gear can I bring? One footlocker. Aye, aye, Commander. Alright. Eavesdrop on this conversation. First deployment is somewhere near Palavan. Reports say not to depend on comms. I'll leave vid messages then, and you can do the same. Well, they said that due to concerns about signal congestion, we're supposed to avoid sending messages at all. They're trying to keep war data coming through, so every data packet counts. So, how am I supposed to talk with you then? Yeah, like I said, no good conversations to over here. Hello, Commander Shepard. Welcome to the Citadel. This is Docking Bay D-24. Note that due to recent events, official identification and weapons permits may be requested by CSEC personnel for routine verification. What's with the heightened security? New what do you think? New have been added in order to speed up processing at the security stations in each docking area. Citadel security screening technology uses highly advanced biometric authentication systems developed by the CERTA Foundation. Please note that any attempt to circumvent Citadel security measures will result in immediate incarceration. What else is in the area? Try it. You are standing in docking area D-24. According to your biometrics file, you are cleared to access further information about this bay. This is the airlock currently assigned to the Systems Alliance ship, Normandy. If you look out the bay window, you can see one of the many magnificent vistas for which the Citadel is renowned. What about yep. that room over Very there? Very pretty. The waiting area is for those who wish to speak to our new arrivals. It is located next to security processing. That's all. Please speak with me again if you require further assistance. All right, so Emily Wall, uh, she does not appear in this game uh, at all, unfortunately. Sad because people obviously loved her. Uh, she was, you know, she's a popular character. People really like uh, Emily Wong. Uh, when this game launched, uh, there was a uh, a Twitter feed. Uh, Alliance News Network Twitter feed, uh, sort of tying into it. Uh, the game, that Twitter feed, was uh, they had Emily Wong running it. Uh, she was on Earth when the invasion hit. Uh, she, along with a scientist and a security guard, uh, sort of fled, found a, uh, a sky van and started flying around looking for, trying to figure out what was going on, trying to find safe spaces. Um, they figured out that uh, any any area where people gather during emergencies uh, was being attacked by Reapers, uh, people being rounded up and huskified. Um... The scientist she was traveling with uh, guessed that the sound the Reapers made, that sound, uh, was meant to scare people. Um, they found that Reapers were destroying any roads out of cities in order to keep people contained. Um, and yeah, she was, yeah, they were just flying around scared. Uh, and at one point, they were flying their air car, sky car, sky van, whatever. Uh, and they happened to 
get very, very close to a Reaper. And they got shut up. Uh, the other person in the van was dead. Uh, and Emily Wong was fatally wounded. Uh, which is when she found her courage. So the last two tweets were awesome. Uh, her last two tweets were, Go on. Make your noise. Try to scare us. And her last tweet, You want to see how a human dies? At ramming speed. So, she did die off screen, but a hell of a death, at least. Uh, there is a uh, mod you can download where uh, Diana Ellers will actually send you an email of the entirety of that uh, Twitter feed of Emily Wong's Twitter story, her reporting. Uh, or, obviously, you can just find it on the... Uh, Mass Effect Wiki would be the easiest place to read through it all. Speaking of mods, I did download a couple of mods for this. I will talk about them later as they become relevant. Another somewhat controversial... Uh, this is also somewhat controversial. Somewhat divisive. This is the fastest you can move. I am holding down the uh, the run button, and it makes no difference whether you hold the button down or not. It's you move in slow motion in these. Uh, there's a couple more dream sequences. Uh, in all three, you just move ridiculously slowly. Kid just disappears. You have to go hunting for him. I just think that they are almost painfully cheesy. So I don't like them. Maybe they work for you. Maybe, you know. Obviously it's meant to, like, the cost of the war weighing on Shepard. Ayara, can I help you? I've been forwarding the Turian Counselor information on the Prothean device. It can't be built without Council support, but he's not budging until their Primarch is safe. I know. Are you all right? I didn't get what you'd call a good night's rest. There's more to it than that, isn't there? What's really bothering you? When the Reapers hit, I could hear people screaming in the streets below me. We left a lot of them behind. There's no way for you to save them all. But I know you're doing everything you can, and you'll get back there in time to help. I hope you're right. You can't save them all is, of course, a Don't major feat in this game. Commander Shepard, I'm Specialist. Oh, uh, I, I beg your pardon. I thought you were alone. I was just leaving. Commander Shepard, I'm Com Specialist Samantha Trainer with Alliance R&D. I was part of the team retrofitting the Normandy after you turned it over to the Alliance. Voiced by Alex Wilton Regan. There weren't many of us aboard when the Reapers hit. So yeah, she's uh, Samantha here is voiced by Alex Wilton Regan. Uh, she is actually a uh, she's actually a romance option for female shepherds. Slow down, specialist trainer. You're doing fine. Thank and you. And she's adorable. I worked in a lab. I never thought I'd be serving on a ship. 
Why don't you tell me about the retrofits? The ship's in line with Alliance regs now, and it has new, top-of-the-line, quantum entanglement communicators. In fact, Admiral Anderson had intended to use the Normandy as his mobile command center. That's no longer an option. Twice yes, I've taken his ship from him. he chose to stay and fight. I in any event, I'm honored to serve under you, Commander. For as long as you need me, that is. They only sent me here to oversee the retrofits. Shepard. Some of our systems require further testing, and Specialist Trainer has been extremely effective during installation. I would prefer that she remain. Got it, Edie. Oh, wait, since when does a virtual intelligence make requests? Edie's an AI. Fully self-aware. Oh, I knew it. I knew Joker was lying. Jeff requested that I pretend to be a simple VI to protect myself. I apologize for the deception. Thanks, E.D., and I apologize for all those times I talked about how... Mm, attractive your voice was. Anyway, <laughs> shall I give you a tour? Like I said... I think you'll be impressed by the new upgrades. Like I said, she's adorable. In the CIC, you'll find the galaxy map where you can set the Normandy's destination. You can also check your messages at your private terminal. The War Room houses a strategic command center for mission-specific intel and war analysis. The shuttle bay contains an armory where you can modify your equipment between missions. Finally, Liara has set up a lot of hardware down in the old XO office on Deck 3. I think she's claimed that room. And there you are. Still the same ship as before, it just flies Alliance colors now. Speaking of which, I believe Admiral Hackett would like to speak to you at the VidCon. And, uh, Edie, as I mentioned before, voiced, once again, by Trisha Helfer. It's no wonder people like her voice. Udina updated me on your meeting with the Council. Sounds like they're running scared. We did present them with a lot of unknowns. They're feeling threatened and want immediate solutions, not theories. Theories are all we've got right now. What's your plan? I'm trying to get the Turian Primarch for a summit meeting with the Asari and Salarians. I'll bypass the Council and appeal directly to their leadership. That's good, I like it. This is where we start laying the groundwork for our counterattack. Unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot to back it up right now. Then build alliances. Gather everything and everybody you can for the cause. What about the Prothean device? Find me people who can help build it. And if you can't, I'll take ships, soldiers, supplies, whatever you can get. We need to keep hitting the Reapers across every theater of war they open. Buy us time to figure out the device. And when it's finished? Assuming it ever is, we pool all our resources. Think of it as a giant armada for delivering the device, when the Reapers are most vulnerable. The stronger you can make that armada, the better the chances of punching through. What about Earth, sir? We'll just have to hope Anderson and what's left of the Alliance forces can hold out until we've dealt with the enemy. I understand. Good. Then make it happen, Commander. I'll be expecting regular updates on your progress. Hack it out. All right, so time to talk about war assets. For the record, uh, this uh, space here, this empty space, uh, that will start filling up as we uh, go along. The people, weapons, armies, and fleets that you've accumulated are your war assets. The overall readiness of the galaxy determines how effectively these assets will perform in the final battle. Uh, galactic readiness is no longer a thing. Um, that was based on... Hmm. Allied forces are overwhelmed by Reapers on multiple fronts and taking heavy casualties. Troops assisting in a final push will have a strength of 655. Chances of success are very poor. The Systems Alliance represents humanity's economic, political, and military reach for the galaxy. Its naval forces are led by Admiral Stephen Hackett. So... Galactic readiness was something in the original game. Uh, basically, galactic readiness started at 50%. Uh, had a base of 50%. What that meant is all your war assets would have half effectiveness. So right now I've got 655. Uh, the 50% galactic uh, readiness would put that at uh, 322 or 323. Oh, no, 327 or 3 Yeah, 327, 328. 
Uh, the way to raise galactic readiness was through uh, the multiplayer, uh, which was really popular. Uh, I've never played the multiplayer myself, but uh, it was really popular. Uh, it lasted a long time. People were playing it for years after the game came out. Uh, it was co-op multiplayer, and uh, teams of up to four. You could actually solo, solo if you uh, felt skilled enough, but teams of uh, one to four players uh, working together to uh, to clear maps. The maps uh, are through uh, are also in this game. All the maps in the multiplayer were also locations in uh, of missions in this game. Anyway, the Alliance Engineering Corps cuts roads through mountains and builds bases on asteroids. While the bulk of the AEC helps has active wartime duties, the Bredis are helping build a device of protein origin recovered on Mars. Due to the staggering amount of raw materials required, the AEC has been given unprecedented emergency funding for any Alliance resources that will not interfere with the deployment of troops. 130... So far. 100, uh, 130 strength so far. 100 for the 103rd Marine Division. The old saying, every Marine is a rifleman, still holds true in the Alliance. Every Marine enlistee, from clerk to sniper, goes through a period of infantry training. As a result, the 103rd Marine Division is Earth's largest collection of Special Forces soldiers. Officers from notable battles, such as the Scalian Blitz and the First Contact War, run harsh training exercises in a variety of environments, uh, insisting the Marines be prepared to storm any beach on any planet. This training has been useful in the Reaper War, as the 103rd can be fi uh, fighting in an Arctic desert one week, crawling through jungles the next. Uh, all three, the 1st, 3rd, and 5th fleets, level 65, the 1st fleet was stationed near the Charon Relay when the Reapers invaded the Sol system. By the time Admiral Hackett issued the order to retreat, its size, once the largest in the Alliance Navy, had been cut by half. Commanding, Commanding Admiral Inez Lindholm made the painful decision to use a tenth of the fleet's remaining vessels as cover so the remainder could escape. Her gamble paid off, as the 1st fleet limped out of the Relay to rally with the rest of the Alliance forces on the run. Uh, updated. This fleet lost a third of its vessels protecting the council two, the, protecting the council during the Battle of the Citadel two years ago. Unfortunately, the Alliance did not have time to rebuild the fleet to its previous strength before the Reapers invaded. Uh, if you sacrifice the council at the end of Mass Effect 1, this is not the case. Uh, stationed, by, stationed at Arcturus, the third fleet is headed by Admiral Nitesh Singh. When the Reapers came for the station, Singh had already pulled his command ship, the SSV Logan, back to an ideal firing position for its mass accelerator cannons. The Dreadnought's guns managed to slow down a destroyer before it could demolish the Third Fleet, but Singh was forced to retreat in the face of overwhelming opposition from the Reapers. The Fifth Fleet became famous across the galaxy after spearheading Alliance forces at the Battle of the Citadel. It was guarding Arctura Station when the Reapers attacked. After a bloody and desperate battle, Admiral Hackett gave the order to retreat, to retreat, sacrificing the entirety of the Alliance Second Fleet to give the Third and Fifth the chance to escape. The Fifth Fleet's engineers are busy repairing its damaged vessels, grimly anticipating a return to Earth and revenge against the Reapers. Alliance News Network reporter Diana Allers has been broadcasting from the Normandy, interviewing crew members and high-ranking Alliance officers to give the galaxy an insider's view of the war. Five points. When the original 115 for the Normandy SR2. When the original SSV Normandy was destroyed, Cerberus rebuilt the ship from stolen Alliance plants. Dubbed the SR2, the Alliance took the new Normandy apart and refitted some of its systems with new technology of its own. As a result, the SR2 Normandy is the highest performing frigate in the entire Alliance Navy, and possibly the fastest ship in its class. The Normandy is commanded by Shepard, an Alliance officer and humanity's first specter. To bolster the Normandy's firepower, Commander Shepard installed a Thanix magnetic hydrodynamic cannon on the ship's undercarriage. Based on Reaper technology, the powerful weapon fires molten metal accelerated to a fraction of the speed of light. Before taking on the Collectors, Commander Shepard reinforced the Normandy's superstructure with Solaris armor. This protective layer of carbon nanotube sheeting can withstand temperatures that would have instantly vaporized more conventional armor. And the Normandy has been upgraded with cyclonic barrier technology, allowing the ship's Mass Effect field projectors to fire rapidly oscillating barriers 
that deflect rather than directly absorb kinetic shocks. Commander Shepard uncovered significant elemental deposits while scanning planets with the Normandy SR-2. When the Alliance dry docked the, the Normandy, they seized all recovered elements. This material surplus has gone toward building the Prothean device discovered on Mars. So it's up to 100 points for uh, for the mineral resources, depending on how much you scan. Uh, there's no more resource uh, gather, no, resource scanning. They removed that for this game. Kalisa Bintsin and Al-Jalani. Westerland News reported Kalisa Bintsin and Al-Jalani reached out recently to our viewers with a wartime plea for unity and cooperation among all galactic species. Updated. Her sincerity touched action at viewers, and donations for war relief efforts are pouring in, both the, to the Alliance and its alien allies. And I will end this episode here. Next episode... I'm probably actually going to do... So next episode, I'll start off by uh, talking to the rest of the people on the Normandy. I'll talk to everybody on the Normandy. Uh, yeah, this is what they did to this is what they did to to Morden's lab. Tore it up. Between that and uh, yeah, so uh, Morden's lab and the uh, the armory. Uh, were removed, and uh, also the communications room was removed, so a lot of stuff, all that stuff is removed. And uh, instead we got this, which is, uh, I think, an improvement. So, yeah, that'll do for this episode. Next episode, I talk to more people, and I will... Uh, Admiral Stephen Hackett is a decorated officer in the Systems Alliance, currently assigned to Arcturus Station on the far side of the Sol Relay. In the battle for the Citadel, Admiral Hackett commanded the 5th Fleet. Following that victory, he was promoted to head of the Alliance military. Hackett was born to a single mother in Buenos Aires in 2134. When his mother died in the pandemic of 2146, he was placed in the Advanced Training Academy for Juveniles, where his superior talents in science and leadership quickly became evident. Hackett enlisted in 2152, volunteering for high-risk missions to colonize space beyond the Sol Relay. He was commissioned as a second lieutenant on Arcturus Station in 2156, and soon proved his ability in the First Contact War. His rare ascent from enlisted man to admiral remains an Alliance legend. Admiral David Edward Anderson is a career military officer in the Systems Alliance Navy. Born in London in 2137, he later moved to Arcturus Station and became the first graduate of the Alliance's now renowned N7 Marine program. Anderson is one of the Alliance's most decorated Special Forces operatives and served with honor during the First Contact War. He was the original captain of the SSV Normandy before relinquishing command to his XO, Commander Shepard. After the Alliance victory in the Battle of the Citadel, Anderson briefly served as the Citadel's first human counselor. He soon became embroiled in a Cerberus plot to abduct his friend Kaylee Sanders, however, and learned that he was unable to live a life without action. He stepped down as counselor and returned to the military to prepare for the Reaper invasion. The Alliance Parliament named Donald Udina as his successor. Yeah, the story about the uh, Cerberus plot to abduct Kaylee Sanders, that uh, was in uh, Mass Effect Ascension. Uh, the novel. Uh, they also showed up in Mass Effect, uh, Mass Effect Deception, but that book was garbage. Uh, got basic lore elements wrong. Uh and was just like a really bad, bad book. So people pretend that Mass Effect Deception didn't happen. It was bad enough that Bioware actually like promised to release a uh, an updated version of it. They never did, but like it was so bad that even Bioware was like, "Okay, you're right. It was bad. 
they never did actually get around to uh, to releasing the uh, the new version of it. Kind of a shame. Anyway, like I said, that's it for this episode. Uh, next episode, more talking.